Good morning, MBMS, and welcome to our 2017 Veterans Day Assembly. Uh, thank you to the MBMS band for playing our processional and bringing us in. How about a round of applause, please? I have with me today my co-host, Joe Constanti, and he will begin our assembly. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce the presentation of colors by the Middlesex County Sheriff's Office.
I'd also like to thank uh, Deb Walls, who every year organizes uh, her own army of people who put on a fantastic breakfast for our veterans, which they enjoy. Uh, and Deb likes to remain uh, in, behind the scenes and doesn't like anyone to know that she does it all. But uh, I think without people like her, oftentimes uh, events like this don't happen. And we're very grateful for all of Deb's work and support of our veterans here in our community. So a big round of applause. In a moment, uh, we will introduce you to our, our veterans who are guests with us here. Uh, before we do that, though, I would like to remind everyone that on Veterans Day, we certainly are celebrating the veterans who join us in their service and their commitment to country. But we also have many veterans who we have lost, who cannot join us today. Some of those we've lost in battle. Some of those we've lost even when they've returned and spent time back here in our country and lived their lives much the way you hope to live yours. If we can, at this time, have a moment of silence for those veterans who are not able to join us today. Thank you. And we'll move to our first component and have our Melrose Veterans Memorial Middle School Band introduce uh, our play for you, Black Eagles, conducted by Mr. Matt Rapucci. Brooke, Army, Vietnam era. 
William Carney, Navy, Korea. Mike Casella, Navy, Vietnam. Bernard Sincata, Navy CBs, World War II. Richard Collis, Army, National Guard, Korean era. Walter Camo, Navy, Vietnam. Phil Conti, Army, Cuban Missile Crisis. Paul Cunningham, Army, National Guard, Vietnam. Jim Day, Navy, Korea, Vietnam. Spencer DeShields, Navy, Vietnam. William Diaz, Army. Myron Dipper, Army, Vietnam. Joseph Doucet, Navy, Korea. Peter Dole, Army, Vietnam. Nick Ephraim, Navy, Vietnam. Tom Ethlers, Air Force, Vietnam, Des Desert Storm. Dennis Farrell, Air Force, Vietnam, Desert Storm. June Farron, Air Force. Frank Ferrick, Navy, Vietnam. Richard Flanagan, Navy, World War II. William Fundulis, Army, Korea. Scott Forbes, Air Force, Iraq, Afghanistan. Robert Garvey, Army, Vietnam. Peter Janino, Anthony Gallardi, Army. Mark Gullo, Army Chaplain, Vietnam. David Goodhu, Coast Guard, Vietnam. Helen Gurju, Gold Star Wives. Patricia Harrington, Navy. Robert Harrison, Army, Vietnam era. James Harrington, Marine Corps, Vietnam era. William Higgins, our school resource officer, National Guard Reserves, currently serving. Daniel Hernberg, Army, Vietnam. Ellen Hutchins, U.S. Public Health Service. Jim Kelly, Air Force, Korean. John Laurie, Air Force, World War II. Ralph Levy, Army, World War II. San Leoncello, Army, Korea. Thomas Marr, Navy, Korea. Michael Marciello, Army, Middle East. Robert Martin, Navy, Cuban Missile Crisis. Peter Mason, Army, Vietnam era. David Mistrelli, Army Medical Corps. Roger Mistrelli, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Tom McCarthy, Army, Vietnam. Paul McClain, Navy, Cuban Missile Crisis. Paul McQuillan, Navy, Cuban Missile Crisis. Joe Millett, Army and Navy. Peter Mortimer, Army. Walter Oxford, Coast Guard. Gerald Peavy, Navy, Vietnam. John Piasecki, Army. Robert Piquet, Navy, Vietnam era. Anthony Pinjaro, Army, Korea. Richard Pitts, Army, Korea. Andrew Pravidi, Army, Korea. Russell Priestley, Air Force. Chris Radzik, Navy, Vietnam. Martin Robichaud, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Ronald Rosati, Army, Grenada Rescue Mission. Paul Rossi, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Carl Rakowski, Marine Corps, Vietnam. Douglas Shalman, Air Force. Richard Stanton, Army, Vietnam War. Frank Tumbini, Navy, Korea. Don Truman, Army, Vietnam. David Uong, Navy, Active Duty. Edward Vickery, Army, Air Force, World War II. Ronald Albatelli, Army. Freeman Dix, Navy, Korean War. Richard Jackson, Air Force, Brian Masterson, Navy, Korean War, and Alicia Redden, Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our veterans, and this is the reason why we are here today. Please give them a round of applause. Now, the patriotic salute sung by our very own MVMMS Select Chorus under the direction of Ms. Piper.
to our select chorus for their great performance there. Uh, Ms. Piper, for all of your work with them. Again, how about a round of applause for our select chorus? As has become an annual tradition for us, uh, we have student speakers. And I'd like to introduce our first student speaker, eighth grader Emmy Kilgallen. Emmy? students, staff, parents, and esteemed guests. My name is Emmy Kilgallen, and I was asked to give an address today about what Veterans Day means to me. For years, I never paid much attention to the importance of Veterans Day. I just thought, hey, no school, I get to sleep in and watch TV in my pajamas all day. Score! But back when I attended Hoover Elementary School, we never did anything special for Veterans Day. Sure, they would talk about it a little, and they would maybe give us a paper that everyone threw in the recycling bin or misplaced in after. It wasn't until I came to MBMMS in sixth grade that my eyes were opened. My first Veterans Day assembly left an impression on me that stayed through my time in middle school. Today, I hope to leave an impression on all of you. Many of the great addresses I've heard in my years include some kind of personal story, which I don't really have, but as I began to plot my own address, I thought of another way of writing the speech with a more broad understanding of Veterans Day. So, let me tell you a little about, bit about the history of Veterans Day. Armistice Day came into effect in 1918 on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, when a truce was declared between Germany and the Allied nations. In 1926, a resolution was passed by Congress for Armistice Day to become annual, and starting in 1938, November 11th became a national holiday. Armistice Day was originally created to honor veterans of World War I. The name Armistice Day was later changed to Veterans Day in 1954, after World War II and the Korean War, to help honor all veterans, no matter when or where they served. No matter the time, back then or nowadays, it's important to honor our veterans. Veterans Day, unlike Memorial Day, helps us pay tribute to all veterans, whether alive or deceased. The men and women who serve in any branch of our military are people just like us. Their parents, grandparents, friends, neighbors, cousins, and siblings. Without those brave men and women defending us, we wouldn't have the freedom to do the things we like to do. I want you to close your eyes for a second and picture the thing you love most, whether it's your family, your friends, your favorite sport or game, your favorite pet, or food, especially food. Now imagine if we didn't have the brave souls in the military to defend us. What would happen to the things you love? People often take for granted the freedoms we have in this country. Many places don't have the same freedoms we do. Now is a great time to reflect back on all the freedoms you've been given. Veterans Day is a, is a day for all people, no matter age, race, or religion, to come together and to celebrate the courageous heroes who keep us safe. So as you go through the rest of your day, I want you to think about all the wonderful things in your life, no matter how big or small, and be thankful they're there. We live in a country where we have the opportunity and the freedom to have such things, and that we have people willing to risk their lives to protect us. I would personally like to thank all the amazing veterans here with us today, for I am honored to be up here sharing my view about this important holiday. So enjoy your day off, everyone. Sleep in and watch TV in your pajamas all day. But promise me, you'll take a moment and think of the importance of Veterans Day, and thank a veteran. Thank you. America the Beautiful will now be played by the MVMMS Orchestra, conducted by Mr. Miller.
I'd now like to welcome to the stage my friend Eamon Dejar to give a Veterans Day student address. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Sharp. Thank you for joining me today in recognizing what the veterans do for us. We need to honor the veterans, our heroes. I am excited to speak in front of you all about what the veterans do for us because a lot comes to mind. They serve in the military in times of war and peace. They have to leave their families for a very long time. Veterans are courageous and brave to be able to leave their families and risk their lives in battle for their country. Every year on November 11th, we get the chance to stop and admire the veterans' sacrifices, fearlessness, and patriotism. The veterans fight for us, and we should think about this every day. Many of you probably do. Maybe because you're a veteran, maybe because you have a loved one that's a veteran, or maybe because you just greatly respect what the veterans do for us. I, for one, may not be you if it weren't for the veterans behind me and many more. I was born in America around 14 years ago, but my parents came to America from Algeria about 15 years ago. They came to America to get the freedom they so desired. Algeria didn't have freedom for everyone, or an education for all children, or just good living conditions in general. But the United States did. We have the veterans to thank for this. They are the ones that have fought for our freedom. My parents came to provide a good education and a good overall life for my siblings and I. So maybe if it weren't for our country and the veterans who protected our country, my parents wouldn't have came here. And I wouldn't be standing here in front of you all today. The veterans make a huge impact on everyone, no matter whether you realize it or not. You all go to school, and you might or might not think of this, but at one point, you realize all of the things the veterans sacrifice for the lives of people they don't even know, but it's also to protect us and our country. Many veterans have sacrificed their lives for us. People everywhere are extremely thankful for how the veterans put themselves in the path of danger just for us. Veterans Day became a national federal holiday in 1938, and thank goodness it did. Veterans Day started because of the end of World War I in 1919. Ending World War I may have started Veterans Day, and it was a very big deal. But we celebrate Veterans Day for many more reasons than that. Veterans Day is a great opportunity to remind everyone how important the veterans are to this country. Freedom really is never free, because we lose a lot to pain a lot. Some soldiers lose their lives in battle for our freedom. America will always be the land of the free, but only if it's the home of the brave. The veterans are the bravest in the country to be able to do what they do for us. This is what makes veterans truly amazing. No matter how dangerous it is and how scared they are, they still serve their country for us. On behalf of everyone here, I thank all of the veterans for their service to the United States. Everyone here is so grateful for what you have done for us. Thank you all for joining me today, and I hope you all have a great day. He was born and raised in New Bedford, Massachusetts. He was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts and raised in Nepal's Florida. Commander graduated from the United States Naval Academy with a bachelor in science degree and honors economics. He also attended the University of West Florida earning a master's degree in business and administration. After earning his wings of gold, Commander reported to patrol 30. Commander had many years of service with deployments for Operation Iraq Freedom and Enduring Freedom, among others. Currently, Commander Masterson is assigned as the, excuse, ex, sorry, 
as the exclusive officer and faculty member of NROTC Boston. He teaches a course in leadership and management and faculties the mentorship and professional development of over 100 future Naval and Marine Corps officers. Commander Masterson has accumulated almost 3,000 hours flying and instructing in four separate naval aircraft. His personal recognition includes the Mentorious Service Medal, Air Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and various companion service awards. Now can we welcome him himself, Commander Masterson. Good morning, MBMMS. How are we doing today? You doing okay? Well, thank you for having me. Again, my name is uh, Commander Brian Masterson. I serve in the United States Navy. We were for almost two decades. Uh, I flew the uh, P-3 Orion, which is a multi-engine, it's a big multi-engine, anti-submarine warfare, maritime control, reconnaissance airplane. I'm honored and quite frankly, I'm in awe of being in your presence today. So thank you for having me. I want to start this morning by thanking your principal, Principal Conway, uh, for inviting me to speak with you at this Veterans Day celebration. We have a beautiful school, an amazing place. I also, I, I can't help but be impressed and at the talent, uh, and I want to thank our, our orchestra, our band, our orchestra, the chorus, and, and Miss Alana, excellent job with the, the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Well, well done. Thank you. I especially want to thank the brave service men and women who are on this stage behind me and also our veterans who are here in the audience today. I saw some parents, and I know uh, we have faculty and staff here. Thank you for what you've done. You serve this nation selflessly so that we may all enjoy the freedoms that make our country so unique and great. I'm humbled by your presence. I also want to remind us all that around the globe and around the clock right now, there are men and women, our moms and dads, our brothers, our sisters, sons, daughters, our friends, who continue to carry the mantle. They train at home and they deploy abroad in order to take our battles to foreign shores so that we don't have to fight those battles in our own backyards. We appreciate their service today, and we appreciate the sacrifices made both by our military members and by their families. As you heard, Veterans Day started as Armistice Day back in 1918 at the end of World War I on the 11th, 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. With today's theme being one of uniting one team, one fight, I thought it would be okay to share with you a story that I think epitomizes that sense of unity, of oneness, especially in the face of adversity. It happened to be, we were on deployment, it was a normal day, just like any other day on deployment. We had a mission to do, and we got called in to the Tactical Support Center, my team, my crew, in order to receive the details of our mission that day. It wasn't like any other mission that we'd have, or had ever flown, but it was one that we prepared for, one that we had trained for, and quite frankly, one that we dreaded. You see, at the time we were fighting a conflict in the Adriatic region, when then the, then the leader of uh, Serbia, Slobodan Milosevic, used his army to invade the neighboring country of Kosovo. Innocent men, women, and children were being slaughtered, or being forced to leave their homes as Milosevic carried out his campaign of ethnic cleansing. 
As it turned out, the Serbian army had a well-hidden and well-protected surface-to-air missile site, a SAM site, that was impacting our fighter aircraft. This particular site prevented our air forces from flying into this part of the country and doing their jobs. So somebody, some genius, decided it would be a good idea to take a P-3 Orion, a big, slow, clunky, 50-year-old airplane, and fly it in a circle with its 11 crew members overhead this SAM site, or where we thought it was. And the goal was to attempt to, to use that, bait the enemy, bait the adversary to lock us up with their radar. When they did, our fighters would swoop in and take out the site. Great idea. My crew was essentially tasked to be a slow-moving target, a decoy, so that the fighters could eliminate the SAM target before it eliminated us. Was I happy about this particular mission? Nope. Was I scared that my crew and I would not be coming back from this flight? You bet. We all were. But in spite of our fears, or how we felt about the task, we knew that we had a job to do, and we were committed to mission accomplishment above all else. The glue that bound these 11 individuals on our crew together, in this instance and in many others, before and after this event, were our common values of honor, courage, and commitment. As we celebrate Veterans Day this year, we're all challenged to remain united by the values by which we stand. Here at 8 MVMMS and across our great country, one of those values is that of inclusion. This is a place where everyone belongs, right? It's a place where respectful behavior is both taught and modeled. Where we recognize the value and the exceptionality of every individual. Just like my crew that day in the Adriatic, we were each uniquely different. Each one of us came from a different home, with different upbringings, from different parts of the country, with a variety of skills and educational backgrounds, religious beliefs, and races. Each came to the team with their own set of strengths and weaknesses. But we were united. We were one team, and we were ready to bring the fight to our adversaries. The same holds true for the students and faculty here. For it's the individual diversity of this school and the people here that makes the entire community stronger. Another shared value at MVMMS is the idea that we are part of a larger whole. It's actually more than that, though. In reality, we are contributors to a global community. What that means is you matter. What you do, the decisions and the choices that you make each and every day can and will have an influence, an impact on those around you. The same holds true for the men and women of our military. Whether an elite member of a Navy SEAL team, an Air Force bomber crew, a Marine infantry platoon, a Coast Guard patrol boat, or an Army artillery regiment, it's recognized and understood that we represent much more than just ourselves. When one of us is successful, we all do well. When one of us does not live up to our core values, it reflects poorly on us all as well. It's that realization as individuals in a unit, in an organization, that help us to work harder to live and behave with integrity, to treat each other with dignity and respect, and to sacrifice, even to the point of our own lives, in order to support them. It's like a family. Think of your family for a moment. Families aren't perfect. I know mine isn't. There are times when your brother and your sister may annoy you, or moments when your mom or dad or a grandparent may embarrass you. At the end of the day, though, they're still your family. You look out for one another. You take care and you support the people in your family. 
The same holds true among a tight team like the military. That sense of belonging, of family, comes from a common purpose. It's a mission. It's a mission of service. The leader of the nonviolent Indian independence movement, Mahatma Gandhi, once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Here at MVMMS, you too are taught the importance of serving others. It brings us together. It unites us. And whether it's to make, it's, the goal is to make someone's life a little bit better. Whether it's collecting Halloween candy for service men and women who are deployed overseas, or helping a classmate through a difficult time. Perhaps you shovel the walk for a neighbor, or make it a habit to volunteer or lend a hand at a homeless shelter or a retirement home. We are all called to serve, and it feels good to take care of others. It feels good because it is good. So that's it. That's why we're here today, right? to recognize and to celebrate the service of our military members. It's that service and that value that brings us as a military across the ages together as a team. I would argue, though, that regardless of whether or not you have or ever will wear the cloth of our nation in the military, we can be one team. We can be strong and united in supporting our shared values. I challenge you to be inclusive, to embrace the diversity and the uniqueness of each individual. In doing so, we create a place where we all truly belong. Make a commitment to serve others in your school and in your community. Go out of your way to make someone else's life a little bit better. Be a family. Be your brother and your sister's keeper. After all, when one of us finds success, we all win. The same holds true when one of us doesn't measure up. Finally, I encourage you to continue to stand up for what is right. Don't be a bystander fight with hate and bigotry. Treat others with respect and with the dignity that we all deserve. Do not remain silent. Rather, be united in our fight to protect and preserve that which we all value as members of MVMMS or of the United States of America. It's our responsibility. It only takes one person to set the right example, to be the right example. I'm reminded of a quote from an actress named Betty Reese. She said, if you think that you're too small to be effective, you've never been in bed with a mosquito. It's our common values which truly make the United States the best country in the world. When we are inclusive, when we serve others, when we recognize that we are important and we're an important part of our communities, both locally, locally and globally, and when we stand together for that which is right, when we do these things, we all have the opportunity to be united, to be one team in one fight. Thank you. Have a great day. Now please welcome Major Bob Driscoll from the Veterans Service Office to talk about this New Year's Veterans Day. from Operation United. Please come up real quickly. So this year is our seventh year of our operation um, experience. 
and many of the vets that are behind us have joined us um, for our annual trip to Washington to see the memorials. Um, and some of them, I hope, will join us this year. So each year we recognize a different group of veterans, uh, whether it be World War II or Vietnam or Korea, uh, women veterans. So this year we're going to be honoring all veterans. So the theme for this year is Operation United, One Team, One Fight. And we picked Operation United because no matter what the political climate is in the country, uh, no matter what the instability in, the, in our world is today, um, our United States military and our veterans, we're all united. So that's our theme for this year. We'll be looking, uh, we had our first fundraiser last night and we'll be doing more fundraising through the years. The students have already started to do their research with um, our high school teacher, Lisa Lord, um, to begin to research some of our local veterans. So we're also, I invite each and every one of you to come on Saturday right across the street because as I speak right now, they're installing our World War II Memorial, which is gonna be the biggest and the best memorial over there for our greatest generation. So we'll be having a ceremony across the street at 10 o'clock, and I hope to see a lot of you there so we can honor our World War II veterans uh, on Saturday. So again, this is our, our group for the year. Um, they're gonna be working very hard and uh, we look forward to having another uh, positive experience. I also want to, again, thank the administration, um, from the principal, all the teachers, um, up to the superintendent, mayor's office, and um, yesterday when we had our first fundraiser, we were visited by members of local government who came to support the students and to talk to them about the, uh, what they were uh, about to take on and we also had members of our state government come last night and talk to the students um, about the project. So again, thank you to everybody and we look forward to a, an exciting year. I don't know why I always get stuck talking after him because I never have anything deep and insightful to say because he always gets it all in one shot. So thanks, Bob. Um, I would also like to just take a minute to invite everyone at 9 a.m. on Saturday prior to the Knoll. We're going to be laying a wreath up at the Women's Monument. The Girl Scouts of the Women's Commission have put that together, so everyone is invited to that. Um, and let's give these girls and do we have our boys up now? Yeah, we have our boys. Let's give them a round of applause for all the work that they've done and all the work that they've done. honestly say, I, I, I couldn't be prouder uh, to be your principal. Uh, getting to hear you today, your performances, the way that you consistently year after year treat and welcome our veterans in our namesake building as Melrose Veterans Memorial Middle School. Uh, it really does, it, it makes me very proud. Uh, starting with, with Emmy's comments about how she learned what Veterans Day was by coming to school here. Uh, previously, she thought it was a day to hang out in her pajamas, as we learned about Emmy this morning. Uh, and, then, and then to hear uh, Eamon's words as well, where Veterans Day was a, a cause for him to have a conversation with his own family about their journey here to the United States, why they came to the United States, and what role these men and women played in creating the environment uh, that, that wanted them to, to come here to the United States and have Eamon have the life that, that he's enjoyed coming to school here. Uh, and Commander Masterson, I, I would say you did your research on us, but I think you did your reconnaissance on us. Um, 
you, you seem to know a lot about what we teach and value here at the school, and uh, I think your words were very poignant, so thank you very much, Commander. Uh, greatly appreciate it for all the students who spoke today. Um, and I would like to thank, there's two folks you need to think about, too, that also stay behind the scenes. And that's in the office, uh, Ms. Hardy and Ms. Cop, and they're not in the, they're not here to hear it. Uh, they're answering phones and doing what good office staff does is make the building work every day. Uh, they receive the phone calls from these men and women, uh, get this information about them. We they send out the invitations. They do a lot of the work and a lot of the preparation. Uh, and if you get a chance to see them today around the building or even into next week, make sure you thank them for all of their work. Um, because it, it wouldn't happen without them. Uh, they're, they're often, they make, they make me work. They figure out how to get me to where I'm supposed to be every day. So, uh, greatly appreciative of everything they do. So as, uh, as I mentioned, this is a namesake building, uh, a Veterans Memorial Building. We have three memorial sites here on campus. Uh, and as is sort of time-honored tradition at our Veterans and Memorial Day assemblies is that we will decorate our memorials. So we have beautiful bouquets of flowers that we'll show you here. Um, and I'm going to invite our veterans to join uh, our three students here. Come on out. Uh, when we have our recessional off the stage, um, I'll invite any of you to, to join them in our three memorials. And if you're curious where our three memorials are on this campus, one of them, uh, as Major Driscoll mentioned, is across the street. It's the large, large memorial. Uh, and the new, it's being redone. And, and as I learned this morning, the new memorial is so big that the crane they brought in yesterday to put it down was not big enough. They needed a bigger crane. So I don't know how close we're going to be able to get, uh, but we'll get as close as you can. That's one across the street at the veteran site. Uh, our second memorial is between the high school and the middle school. There is a memorial plaque there as well. And the third, which I think a lot of people miss, is our flagpole out in front. That is an original flagpole to the first middle school that was here. Uh, and I encourage you, all of you are out there every day. You stand around that flagpole, read what's on that flagpole and learn what that memorial says, because it is, is it, it is meaningful as a school to why we have our namesake. So I encourage you to read that. And those are our three memorial sites that we will honor by decorating our memorials, which is a tradition both at Veterans and Memorial Day. So thank you. And I'd like to have uh, one more student come join us and offer some closing remarks. Uh, I'd like to welcome eighth grader Owen Dewey. Thank our two hosts, Joey and Justice, and I thank you, the audience, for being so great during this assembly. Lastly, I'd like to thank our veterans for laying down their lives and giving up so much to keep each and every one of us safe and free. There are many things we can do to honor our fallen veterans in this country, but one of the huge ways is TAPS. TAPS is a song created by Oliver Wilcox Norton Butterfield. TAPS is a huge part of the United States culture and especially in a veteran's life. These are played to honor our fallen veterans and give them the last song. The song is full of peace and love to appreciate the end of somebody's life. Its nickname was Extinguished Lights. This was the name for Taps before the name was adopted. This was told, this told the soldiers to turn off the lights and go to sleep. Taps was adopted by the Union General for his brigade in July, 1862. Before Taps was made popular in the United States, we honored our veterans by a cannon shot over them. Then the general had taps played right before the end of the Civil War. 
It is traditionally played with a single bugle, but here at MBFMS we play it with two trumpets. So would you please welcome to the stage our two trumpet players, Gerard Takuna and Colin Orman. Much. We're very honored again to have our guest here, um, and it, it's, it, I, I mean it when I said I couldn't be prouder of you today. Uh, the way you treat everyone, the way you welcome uh, everyone, and the words that were shared with us today. So at, at this time, if we have our 8th graders who were, uh, walked our veterans in, if you can proceed over that way, and we'll have our recessional, and uh, we invite our veterans to join uh, some of our students to decorate our memorials. And thank you very much, everyone. A wonderful job today.